can watch this later. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, oh, I was actually reading about all her siblings this morning and it's amazing. They all were really, like they all did really well and they were all educated and they came from a farming family that was pur puritanical, I think, is that right? Um, you know, all, all of the, our sisters all graduated college, which is very unusual for women at the turn of the uh, century in 1900. But they had no interest in her being an artist. That's true. No one, no yeah. one actually thought she was yeah. going to become an artist, except her sister Effa. Her yeah. sister Effa thought she was very talented and encouraged her to someday take art lessons, which she did. But her parents didn't even allow, they were very religious people, and they did not allow her to have painting supplies or anything when she was young. Until she met, she always loved painting, but until she met Robert, she wasn't really doing art as, as a profession. She was going to school. And she was going to be a teacher. She was going to be a teacher. She actually she actually played the, did she play the piano too? Um, I don't know. I'm not, I, not sure. I don't know if she had musical yeah. but she was going to be a teacher until Robert, who became the vice principal of Topeka High School around 1903 or four, uh, told her that there was a new art teacher coming into that school. And that if she, he had a plan that he thought she would like. He said, you could drop out of college and give up your teaching career, start taking art lessons and marry me. And I think that'll work out very well. Well, she that. dropped out. She dropped out and she married him. So it must have been true. <laughs> yeah. And he actually became a principal in Lawrence, right? Yep. Lawrenceville High School? Yeah, for about uh, 14 years until... Uh, Fern decided that her, she, he'd have a better art career in Philadelphia I mean, and Bucks County and in Pennsylvania. And she said to Robert, would you mind moving to Pennsylvania with me and like giving up your teaching career? And he said, okay, you, okay. Gave, you gave up your, well, he didn't give up his teaching career. He just gave it up in Kansas. He resumed ah. his teaching career at several different schools in Pennsylvania from 1920 to 1944. Yeah. Which was when he passed. And, oh, no, he died know, in 1948. But he moved back with Fern and they and all of the property, the house that he had was put into Fern's estate, well, their estate, and she inherited that. And he lived with her from, I guess, from 45 to 48 until he passed yeah. away. Yeah, he wasn't in very good health for the past last three years of his life. And after he passed away, Fern's health began deteriorating. Yeah. And she passed away three years later. But she had lost some of her, her sisters and her brother. At the same time, right? Her and the, <laughs> the two older sisters were, they lived much longer than the younger. But she had a pretty exciting life from oh, the yeah. 1920s to the 1940s. She belonged to the Philadelphia 10 and about 10 other art clubs. She traveled all over the country. Most of her life was in Pennsylvania or Massachusetts, sometimes in New York, but she did travel all around the country. And, there's and to Europe. And to Europe in 1925. And there's records of all of these shows and, and trips and prizes that she won. And- uh, Some of her most famous paintings yep. were in Italy. Oh, wow. Art, art country of the world. <laughs> the same level as men so it was a struggle for her and that's why they had organizations for women so that they could show in as many places as the men because the men wouldn't show with them so they formed their own group and philadelphia 10 was there from around what 19 20 19 yeah the philadelphia 10 group of which was, fern was a member from 1922 to 1935 30. They were around from 1917 to 1945. They were around for quite a while. And that really put, I think that put women on the map as yeah. artists in America, probably more than any oh. other event, other than the formation of the NAWA, the National Association of Women Artists back in 1889. But they, they went on the map. But the reason that they disbanded the Philadelphia 10 was when World War II came in, women became equalized. They had to work in factories. They had to help with, the, the war. So after that, it became much easier for them to show art with men because they did so many things on par with them and they were much more respected. 
And Fern was one of the most wonderful women artists, I think, of the of the twenty of the twentieth century, right? Oh yeah, and I mean we beautiful. Every time we come across a new painting of hers, we're, we're very very excited. And uh, yeah, you know, she could see the world in a different way. Actually, I'm, I was talking to a patron yesterday. She wanted to be here um, to listen to the discussion, but um, she was telling me she thinks she was like a tetra. Um, color seer. Yeah, yeah, like she could see more colors than other people. Like she might have a gene mutation um, that allowed her to see those vibrant colors in the paint then. Well, Fern, Fern could see colors that other people couldn't see. People, when she was a little girl, she said people made fun of her because when she looked at oh. snow, you could actually see it even in uh, the picture on the front cover, which was her house in, in Lumberville in 1920, which is owned by. Um, Lori's family, member of Lori's family, that owns that owns that painting, not the house. And you can <laughs> yeah. see in the snow on the on the front lawn that she they're all different kind of colors. And she always preferred always saw colors in the snow. People said snow is white, and she said no, it's not white. It's oh, there's a lot of colors in snow, and I see them. And she took a lot of leeway in her paintings and moved houses around, changed colors of houses. She wanted things. But that's to that picture is pretty accurate. We, well, we've driven past that, that yeah, house. But not, the color. not the color of the house, but, <laughs> but the location of that house on River Road, um, up on a hill um, with, with uh, some of those same trees and boxwoods in front of it. it. It looks a lot like that now, 100 years later. Yeah, but a lot of her colors and a lot of her, the ones that she did, the, um, with the railroad, the most famous ones that she- um, Oh, the evening local yeah, pictures. Yeah, the evening yeah. local pictures. She took a lot of leeway to make them look the way she wanted them to look and the colors she wanted the houses to look like. I mean, she switched positions of things so that <laughs> the painting would look just the way she wanted it to look. A she very, a very strange thing, before I forget, by the way, about uh, painting, for painting a pictures of her house. She painted lots of pictures of that house, yeah. the, the house on the cover of our book, which she called Boxwood. And then in 1929, she built the second house that she called Boxwood overlooking the cliffs of the Delaware River. Kind of never, <laughs> for knowledge, never painted a single picture of the second house, even though she designed it and personally built it with her architect. Never painted one picture of it. I don't know why. Oh, Maybe. wow. Maybe, um, I mean, she didn't really paint her family either. Maybe it was something personal. Yeah. No, she, she didn't, didn't do keep portrait. herself. Wasn't her thing. But she did have, but she did have where she did have a, a studio, and a lot of the women artists in the twenties would show with her in her own studio. But there was never pictures of that studio either, or the house. Well, we're still hopeful of finding these things. We are still contacting people. Of we're still looking for photographs. We're still expecting someday paintings to turn up of her second Boxwood house uh, on um, on. Um, River Road. No, this is River Road. That was on. Uh, that was on Main Street. On Main Street in yeah. in New Hope. This one was in Lumberville, and we're still thinking there's things that are going to turn up if we just keep looking and looking. And we have our website, so people, you know, tend to write things to us, right? Or from yep. we get information. Yeah. Laura keeps supplying us with new information that we should put on, the web, which is kind of nice. So it's wonderful. Yeah, I um I put the website at the end of the PowerPoint, so kind of <laughs> everyone wants it at the end. Um, <clears throat> oh, I was going to ask, um, do you own one of her pieces? Ah, that was what I okay, was just so, asking him. If yeah, we so, don't, we sort of own. <laughs> so over the years, we've owned about ten cabbages, and we've sold them all at auction uh, for financial reasons, and, and to be able to buy the next painting. And some of them have been for clients. And yes, that's true. Some were for clients, and uh, but. A few months ago, um, we were contacted by a gentleman who lives in the swamp area in, Miss in Mississippi, of all places, about one of Fern's largest and most beautiful Gloucester scenes. The Gloucester scene. <laughs> uh, that his family acquired back in the late 1920s, or early 1930s. And it was, it was beautiful, um, but there was some paint loss on it. It was about 15% paint loss. It got destroyed. It was it was damaged in uh, Hurricane Camille in 1969, and he asked us if we'd be interested in buying the painting, and 
we said we would. And then we, then we found out that he had taken it to some auction houses who told him that the painting was very mm -hmm. unstable and it couldn't be shipped mm -hmm. anymore. And just by sheer coincidence, there's a restorer in Mississippi, not far from uh, the gentleman that owned that painting. And that's where that painting is now. We did buy it and it's in the process of being restored. And we hope to get it back from the restorer in a few months. And we hope to lend it to the Mishnah Museum and several other museums so that it can be seen by a lot more people. Fantastic. Now this is um, the Gloucester Harbor one on the PowerPoint. Can you all see that? Yes, you, eventually that picture is gonna turn up on, on your PowerPoint. The, the new one, huh? The, and, which which one. she did paint similar paintings. Did, one thing Fern Coverage is very interesting for. Her. Yeah, she, if she liked the painting, she tended to paint it between three and 10 times the same picture if she really, really liked it. But they are slightly different. And, with, with minor variations. Yes, and the, when they did the um, 1990 uh, program, they wrote in it that it would be so hard to have a catalog resume for Fern because nobody can figure it out which how many paintings she did of the same subject and and when they were painted it, it was it was a really hard job to but in our book out. we have as many as five or six of what appears to be the identical painting but when you begin looking at little details of it you'll see that doorways are slightly different colors. the tree is slightly different color is slightly different and one re we first thought she painted that to just see how how paintings how scenes look in different light different times of day but we we later discovered we that she painted the same painting more than once because she wasn't she wasn't very wealthy and if she had a painting that was popular she knew she could sell several versions of it and that's that's why she often painted the same painting several times sometimes she did painting uh, she did paint something more than once to see how it would look in different light or different scenes. Yeah. So often she wanted to sell that painting three or four times well, to pay her bills. people loved it and people because, loved yeah, it. If, if she loved it and people loved it, she knew she could sell it again and, and she again. she would change it so it was unique for each person. That's but, really cool. But it was very interesting. And she was an interesting, to live on your own in your own house in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and before she passed away is an amazing thing. Women were not doing that. Women didn't take an occupation and decide they were going to study this, they were going to do it. Most women got married, had children, except women artists were a typical group that didn't always have children and didn't always marry because they wanted mm. to follow what was their obsession in life. So they did it and some of them have become awfully wonderful and awfully famous painters in the years that they did it. So yeah, I imagine an interesting thing focus. about women. Yeah, no, I'm. I was amazed at like all the things that she was able to accomplish, and she traveled a lot. Yes, she did, and she went out. She has paintings. She had shows in Palm Beach, Florida, in Portland, Oregon, in Rio de Janeiro. I mean, she was she was all over the United States and and in South America, which is. Pretty, pretty remarkable. I, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a librarian like you, but now I've done other things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you guys are quite like yourselves. So. Then when we started to do research, I said, you know what? I think you should have been the librarian. <laughs> well, I'm an amateur librarian. <laughs> <laughs> you learn from the best. <laughs> Well, um, I think you actually already answered this question. I just kind of want to show some more of her work. Okay. So the, um, the bottom drying sails, I think I saw several pictures that look similar, like you said, in your, um, in your catalog. Yeah, there's um, over 400 paintings in the catalog and we grouped them by paintings that looked similar, not in date order. Yeah, it was okay. that, like seasonal. We had the winter scene and so on because she, she actually did paint in different seasons and it seemed logical to us. Why wouldn't we put all those paintings together rather than have them, well, you know, she didn't have date order anyway. We, we, have, we have only a few dates for some of the painting. Mm -hmm. So we decided it would look much better if people could see her, her what she did in the spring and summer, what she yeah. did in the winter, what she did in the fall. It was just 
It just seemed logical. Yeah. To do and that. this is interesting. Now that our book has come out, and this is actually the first real full length complete book about Fern Coppage and her life and her work. All of the auction houses now, and, and many of the major dealers, but all of the auction houses contact us now every time they get a Fern Coppage painting to ask us to provide whatever additional background we can tell them about the painting and what it relates to and where it was painted. And so uh, we become the authorities. Yeah, we, think we are. And I, and I, <laughs> it's, uh, I think we're going to, I think Fern Coppage is going to become more and more well known over the next 10 years, thanks to the, the research that we did and, and that Fern's family and the museums uh, helped us to uh, learn about. Great. Wow. So, um, the road to Lumberville, is this one of her more famous ones? Is that correct? Or am I, the road to Lumberville on this slide? Yeah, am it's I, on the um, Yeah. Um, is it one of her more famous ones? Um, I can't quite remember. Yeah. Um, or I, I remember reading I that. Yeah, I don't see a picture of it. Is it, is that coming up oh. on your PowerPoint? So Jennifer, Wait. we can't see anything you're looking at, it feels like. Oh. Oh. I mean, I see just the cover of the magazine. I mean, the book. I don't have yeah, any. That's what we see. Yeah, what we can talking. see is the cover, and it says Q and A. Yeah, I didn't know if oh. Jeff was showing us other paintings. Okay, it said um, that's so weird because I've been moving the PowerPoint along. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let me. You see if you can find the road well, to number. Hi, that's, that's really. It's a really interesting picture. Can you see anything else now? No, it's still just right. a couple of books. It's Piper's huh. yeah. so I'm sharing my screen. It's so weird. Maybe it's because I'm, mute. I'm casting onto a TV. Oh, wait, I see you showing something there, but we still don't no. have pictures. How anyway, you whenever you find the road to Piper's <laughs> That painting is always on display prominently at the Mishner Museum. Uh, it was donated to the Mishner in 1999 by the Lincoln Academy. And oh, yeah. when, when we asked the Mishner Museum if we can get in touch with the, Mishner, the Lilly family, they said they couldn't put us in touch with uh, anyone that had ever uh, donated a painting to the museum. But we tracked down the Lilly family, we tracked down Catherine Lilly, whose parents uh, donated it in 1999, whose grandparents bought it in 1938 for $1,000. Our grandfather bought it as a, an anniversary gift for our grandmother from Fern for $1,000 in 1938, and they donated it to the Mishner in 1999. It, was, um, it wasn't in the 1990 retrospective, but it couldn't have been because they didn't get it until 99. But that is our favorite banking, and, and it's always, on a major wall at the museum on display. Every time we've been there, it's been there. And uh, it's extremely, extremely valuable today. And it's, it's really quite a masterpiece. And as I said, we drove to Bucks County trying to find some of the scenes where Fern painted uh, her pictures. And we thought we'd find that, some, that scene somewhere near Pipersville, but we couldn't. We'll see. Oh. Okay. So that the I guess the roads definitely have changed so much from Fern. Can. You can hold it up. Yeah, I can hold it up. There it is. Okay. There it is. So oh, that's the picture we're working on. Okay. So we Oh, so it worked now. <laughs> that's the part of one of the chapters. Can you see it now? I can see Gloucester. Oh, is that the Okay. Yeah, that is the road to Pipersville. That's oh, at okay. the museum. And the picture you're looking at now with the boats in the harbor is one of three versions of that exact scene that were done between 1920 and 1930. And this is the largest, it's 30 by 36 inches. And you can see little white spots. And oh, yeah, there's, there's more paint loss than that. And we have an expert, luckily all the color across the top is still there. It's the paint loss was mostly restricted to the water along the bottom. And that's all being repainted um, so exact that except under an ultraviolet light, people will not be able to tell that that painting is not 100% original when it's done. And the interesting thing is, we think when he owned it, 
he tried to restore, somebody tried to restore the painting themselves. Yes, the, there are some parts of the water that are not the right color blue. We had to take that away. Um, but that's the original frame and that's the original wow. canvas. It's, it's, it's put on a new canvas now, it's called lining. The original canvas was unstable and that was stabilized and then it was put onto a new, a new liner, which is like a double canvas. So when this is restored, it'll be perfect and it'll be, it'll be displayed in museums the way it, it would have looked in 1930. Now you'll be able to go see it, the people in Pennsylvania. That's true, it'll be at the Missioner, we hope, oh. sometime next year. I'll be sure to go see it once it's there. Um, here, I'm gonna share a couple of the slides that I think we missed. Um, oh, so yes. this is the road to Lumberville. And yeah, then the, the top picture is the same house that's on the cover of our book, shot from a different angle. I mean, painted okay. from a different angle. But it's a later version. I think she painted that. Uh, yeah, that's probably okay. late 20s, and the but one on the cover is no, more like around. 1938. Oh, 1938. Sorry. The other one's from the 20s. Okay. Okay. And then um that's Piper yeah. Vaughn. Oh, do you yeah. have a favorite work out of all of them? And well, yeah, you talked about back road to Piper. Well, some others that we really like, but I don't know. This one is just super special and and especially when we tracked down the family and found out the whole history of the family. Wonderful. And that's big. And, uh, that's, that's, that's also very big. that's thirty-eight by forty. Oh, that's our painting. Oh, wow! Yeah, you, know, you had asked us if we liked yeah, other we collect women uh, artists, and we have, we have a nice collection of paintings by other women artists. And the best snow scene we've ever seen by an artist, other than Fern Coppage, is this nineteen twenty-two painting by uh, Gladys Mitchell, who did paint some other snow scenes, but nothing that was this beautiful and that looked this close to the 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 style and coloration that, that Fern did. And she, I don't think she, she didn't know Fern. She, she was in Chicago. She wasn't copying Fern. She just happened to paint that picture. And we that don't think looks, she painted that many paintings either that good. Yeah, I mean, no, this was, we saw a couple of other pictures and she was really inspired when she painted that uh, backyards in Oak Ridge, uh, Illinois. It's really beautiful. And the one on the painting on the right is not a woman. That's, that's John Bentley, another artist that we collect. And he painted with Fern in uh, Woodstock uh, around 1915 to 1918. And the interesting thing is his, what was his aunt? Um, oh yeah, we, we, met, we met his aunt. For some aunt. strange reason. She lived in our town in White Grove, New Jersey yeah. about 10 or 15 oh, wow. years ago. She lived That's so there. cool. There are a lot of towns that people in Jersey for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, now we're talented Floridians, we think, right? <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. right. You just moved. <clears throat> we love New Jersey. Well, um, many years. Ago. I, I was going to ask if you could recommend any local art museums for our Lumberville community that might not be as well known. And you mentioned the Missioner, okay, so which is one of our real town. One of our goals is to try to get Frank Hoppage's paintings into more museums. Amazingly, the Philadelphia Museum only has a single painting of hers. It's not the one. You see there, it's a plaster scene uh, with some sailboats and it, it isn't one of her masterpieces. And we really think that the, we're really trying to get the Philadelphia Museum. I think it's to, called Red Sails. I think so. Yeah, uh, okay. But the, um, the Reading Museum in Reading, Pennsylvania, which is I think about an hour from Lambertville, they have a really, really great uh, winter scene of hers that they acquired in 1934. And other, Gettysburg has nice paintings. And yeah, the Gettysburg uh, College has a couple of cottages, but I, I don't think they're usually on display. And it's not really a museum. It's really their art gallery yeah. at Gettysburg College. So oh, okay. um, other than the Mishner, which has 20 of her paintings, of which usually about five or six of them are actually on display. Other than the Mishner, there aren't any museums that have more than one of her paintings. The, the uh, Reading has one. Um, what's the other one in Philadelphia that I know, I'm trying to think. it has? There's not, there's not that many. But that's where we're fighting now because Redfield, Garber, they're much more well known than Fern Coppage and they have larger paintings. Yeah, the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, yeah. who uh, is very, um, has very favorable comments about Fern Coppage, 
we asked them why they don't have any fern pathogens in their collection, and they said they don't know. <laughs> yeah, <most people. laughs> I mean, they told us we could give them one, and then they would have it in their collection. But we, since they have millions of dollars, we thought that they could afford to buy yeah. at least one for a copy so that people could see her there. We, we don't get it because, I mean, she really is on par with the men. And the men are yeah. everywhere. And she's still fighting to get Yes, that's place. true. So that what happened right. in the 20s and 30s is kind of still happening to her. Men are still being given uh, favorite treatment. Okay, that is the only known picture of Fern and Robert. <laughs> Robert was actually much better looking than he appears well, yeah, to be in that picture. Rob, yeah. And uh, and Fern was actually, she looks kind of cute there, but she was actually even better looking than, than she looked in that picture. And- Well, we think that's their marriage picture. We're not sure. It is their wedding day. Yeah, we're yeah, taking it. Like it like that's their wedding day in, in, in the family home, in the Coons family home in McPherson, Kansas. And okay. that's where many of the children got married. Yes. Right? In, in yeah. the homestead, in their house, yep. in McPherson. A couple of her sisters had gotten married there a year or two before. George, I think. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they all got married pretty close together, like three, I think three or yeah. four of them. I mean, we're thinking there has to be a lot more pictures. I don't know who has them. Nobody knows who has them, but there has to be more pictures of her with her husband and her with other artists and her with friends of hers and hers, her at art shows. And one of these days we're, we're just hoping uh, that someone will discover where they are and, and share them with us. And then we can share them on our website and maybe in an updated version well, of the book in a few years. And this, this picture and the other pictures that we provided to you, Les and Sue, are they were saved by our grandmother, who is Fern's older sister, Effa. They came from Effa. And they were wonderful. They were wonderful. We didn't, you gave us the best pictures. Oh, yeah, no, we're, we are so grateful for the yeah, picture. So and, and Effa, by the way, was the second best artist in the Coons family, as far as we know. <laughs> um, and she painted watercolors back in the 20s and 30s, and she was pretty darn good, but she decided she wanted to be a teacher and a mother and a homemaker. And, uh, but she was, she was quite, I think she probably could have been a professional artist, but she didn't cho choose that life. Yeah. Um, well, I, we're running a little low on time, but, um, what got you interested in the arts? I'm going to jump to this one, but what got you interested in the arts? Um, well, we were just always museum lovers and we, we living near New York city, we used to visit, uh, well, the good shows that came up at the Museum of Modern Art at the, yeah. at the Met, at the Whitney, at the, then in the 90s, at the Guggenheim. Yeah, yeah, then in the 90s, after you gave birth to Jamie, she had to come in her stroller into our museum. That's true. <laughs> and, be, and be taken all over the place. And so. we actually opened an art gallery for two years between 2004 and 2006. We opened a nice little art gallery in our town, but it wasn't, it wasn't successful. And so- It wasn't we, New York City. It, it wasn't New York. And we didn't want to, we just didn't want to, change our life to become dealers in New York City. So we went back sure. to doing it uh, we did online and um, and continuing to collect. I think we've, over the years, we've collected several hundred paintings and probably sold half of them. And eventually wow. we'd like to have a couple more Fern Cockridge paintings. Uh, we're trying to save up some money for that. <laughs> now, that now that people are finding out about it, I think we need more money. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, Go ahead. I wanted to um, give you an opportunity to talk about your scholarship fund um, okay, before so we yeah. end. So our most recent uh, interesting idea to uh, to make for more well known uh, and to honor her um, and and hopefully to find out more things about her is we decided that there there must be um, a talented young female artist today who are in a similar situation to what Fern was in a hundred years ago. And we would like to uh, find one, two or many of these young women artists and help them go to some of the schools that Fern went to, the, uh, the Chicago Art Institute, the uh, Art Students League and the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts or any other art schools that they'd like to go to 
in the hope of winning prizes and maybe somebody getting into museums. So we started the Fern Cottage Art Scholarship Fund. And right now we're looking for two things. We're looking for a millionaire or a billionaire that will <laughs> help us support this program. <laughs> uh, although we, we can do it ourselves to a certain extent, but if we had somebody really wealthy, I think it would be more successful. But we're also looking for at least one female artist who is maybe between the ages of 17 and the mid twenties, who we, who we think has exceptional talent like Fern did and who is not well known and who we can help become well known. And we're especially interested in someone who is leaning toward modern art. Because if mm -hmm. you look at Fern's, a lot of Fern's paintings, particularly from the 1930s, she loved modern mm -hmm. art and she was gravitating toward painting in a more modernist style, but she was- yeah, It's more flat, right? Yes, but she was afraid to do it because her paintings were selling very well as impressionist paintings. And she was afraid that if she started to become too modernist, she might not be able to sell paintings. But we would mm -hmm. like to find a young female artist who loves Fern and who would like to follow in the footsteps of Fern and who is a little more geared toward modern art. And it would be nice if she also likes snow, but that's kind of doubtful. Uh, so we'll settle for someone that, that just likes <laughs> modern art and feels that you know, she could be the new Fern Coppage. And so we are hoping to get this scholarship. Well, there's going. always struggling artists out there. Oh right? yeah, there's, like there's for sure. Areas. Especially well, in this area. I mean, that that influence from those impressionists, definitely there's there's so so many artists in this area. We know, because we're living with a struggling musician. That's true. <laughs> I'm, 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 your order is I'm a school. musician too, I get it. <laughs> oh. It's definitely tough. You you have to really love what you do and That's work hard at it. Um, also, I wanted to share your website. Um, let me see. Do I have it? On? Oh, actually, do I not have the website bigger? Oh, I must have got it. Well, our website is fromcoppage.com. That's pretty easy to remember. Okay, fromcoppage.com. We actually own that website name for like 20 years. We, we never had any idea that we were going to write a book, but we just kept it. discovered that nobody had ever bought the, the uh, URL for coppage.com. So for like $15, we bought it like 20 years ago. And we said, well, if we ever write a book, we'll have the name for the website. And we did. Oh, can I ask a question? Yeah, actually, yeah. Nice. Is it okay to ask questions now? <laughs> I wanted to know more about that 1990 show at the Mishner. Were those paintings all their property or did they borrow from a bunch of places? And do you know where all those paintings are? I think, um, did you say there were a hundred of them? How many were there? No, there were 50. 50. And they now own probably 15 or they own about 20 paintings. And I think most of them were exhibited uh, in 1990. But we had a track down um, where a lot of the other ones were. And I think if you look through the catalog resume, um, we put a little M in a circle for paintings that are associated with the Mishner. And I think mm -hmm. we have sort of a complete list or, well, not a complete list. I think we know we're about 25 or 30 out of the 50 paintings are. We're still looking for the rest. And wow. Some of them are in private collection. Yeah, the Mishner, I think the Mishner doesn't even know where the rest no. of them are anymore. No. So little by little, we're tracking them down. But who knows, maybe we'll have a retrospective one day. So yeah, we're hoping in the next five years, uh, if we can, to put together another show that probably would be uh, among the places it would be, would be at the Mishnah Museum. Um, one more college. And maybe at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Oh, right. One or more the college Mu Museum of like Modern it. Art, could be. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping to find yeah. some at the Met. No. But, uh, but more college in the PAFA. I mean, a lot of these places would be nice and they could they could remember her when she was there. Yeah, I mean, this there's were so many talented artists and they just got left to the wayside and she's definitely a prominent one. And this is great work that you guys are doing to bring her to the forefront. We heard that the Mystery Museum, it was a rumor that the Mystery Museum is going to have another show in a couple of years of featuring oh. the Philadelphia 10. So that would include Fern Coppage as well yeah. as um, yeah. 10 or probably more than 10. The Philadelphia 10 actually wound up having 30 members over their lifetime. 
And we heard that the uh, Mission Museum wants to have another exhibition of paintings by the Philadelphia 10, which would have probably include five or 10 paintings, maybe more by Fern, and that would be nice. That would be, wow. Oh, well, did anyone else have any other questions before we wrap up? Thank you so much, both of you. This was oh, no, we love delightful. To we could talk about it all day. <laughs> I could listen to it all day. She was just such a, had such an interesting and great life. I mean, um, I was just in awe that her family was so conservative, but they insisted on all their children getting educated. And I love that. And even the girls, like, it was just- It was pretty amazing. Because yeah. As, as a married couple, I don't think they were as well educated as they wanted their children to be. So they really looked ahead and did something. Your first yeah. parents. Yeah, first but parents. I don't think first parents had college degrees. I think they just were high school graduates. But they, they were potato they were farmers, right? Yeah, they were I think that they may not have been rich, but they were pretty smart. That yeah. part, of, part, part of that list was, you know, from their religion, the Church of the Brethren. That's true. That's true. The Church of the Brethren believed in education for women, which most that's other true. parts of society did not believe. And right. so that's why the family moved from Illinois to McPherson, Kansas, because in McPherson, Kansas, the Church of the Brethren was starting McPherson College. And, and one, of the one of the founders was uh, my uh, great grandfather, uh, Sharp, and then uh, Fern's older sister, Effa, ended up marrying the son of right. now the founder of, of, the, of the founding president of McPherson College. So that's why mm -hmm. then my grandmother, Effa's ma married name is Effa Sharp. Okay, we've never been to McPherson College. You've been there? Um, I haven't been, I've been to McPherson, but not to the college. My sister Madeline's been to the college. I think, Madeline, are you on the call? She was. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I am, but I don't have any sound. <laughs> oh, well, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, well, see, our daughter, Amy, lived in McPherson, so we would go to the college often. And we, we went for the centennial, where dad spoke right uh, yeah it's but uh the sharp hall that was built after our grandfather that's been torn down but i have etchings of that um yeah, well, it's wow. just interesting it's interesting mm -hmm. yeah well what a legacy yes yes so it was unusual it was a special for, family it was unusual for the family for the coons for john coons and his wife to feel that strongly about mm -hmm. educating their primarily daughters because there was just one son who lived their first son died uh, at age 10 but so there was just the, the girls and the one son so they believed in education that strongly to relocate from Illinois to McPherson Kansas uh -huh. Oh, and, and what about the family? Do you have some of her works? Of uh, ferns? Yeah. We yeah. all do, don't we, Laurie? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. One, nice. one, painting, one painting is on loan to the Ashby Hodge Gallery in Fayetteville, Missouri. <clears throat> wow. So it's getting across the country, too. That's wonderful. Right. Now, what's the furthest, does, any, does anyone know the furthest away Fern's um, paintings are? I know you said Italy has a lot of her works. No, not today. No. I, as far not as today. I know, her paintings, if they're in well, Europe, we, we've never found one in Europe uh, or in Italy. They all came back to the United States as far as we know. I think, Sue, you mentioned one of her best paintings was the, what is it? it Arno that was done when she was in Italy. Arno, yes. That, I think that's what you meant. Yes. Okay. About Italy. And, and Florentine gold, and she did one other lady here, right? Um, I think that's the only ones we know is those two. Okay. Yeah. And they were all in the um, Well, all our paintings are in, in there. So if we can't get full okay. everything. I must have misheard you. Sorry about that. In fact, um, the Golden Arno painting was on the front cover of Literary 
um, Literary Digest magazine in 1930. There's a picture of that magazine in the book. Doesn't the Salisbury School District own that? That's true. Yeah. The Solberry School owns the, uh, one of the two versions of, of the, uh, the Golden Arnold painting. Uh, and some other beautiful paintings. The Solberry School District has. Yeah, and Co the Kalmia Club um, on front is a part of the Kalmia Club, and they have um, one of hers as well that's hanging in a, I think it's in a hotel yeah. right now. Well, maybe you can call them and they'll let everybody go in. <laughs> they, what? I'm sorry? Oh, that yeah, maybe that would be a nice tour. Maybe the library could contact the um, uh, the Solberry School and see if you could bring a bunch of students there to take a look at the paintings. Yeah, they they have them in one of their conference rooms, and they don't publicize it in part maybe because the paintings are quite quite valuable. But mm -hmm. on a private showing for the library, they they might be willing to let you show those paintings to students from. Uh, who come to the library. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> well, um, I'm sorry, we're ending a little bit late. We started a little bit late. Okay, with okay. technical fine. difficulties, but thank you all for joining us. And thank you. especially um, thank to uh, Lori and, was it Madeline? Yes. yes. Thank you so much for joining us today and, and sharing your family story. It's, it's such a special thing that we get to hear about. I, and now we'll get to share it to other people. I'm excited to, um, I've already like been boasting all about your book to all my friends. And I was hoping they'd come today, but this might not have been the best time in the summer um, at two, but. <laughs> but, um, and especially thank you, Les and Sue for, for um, bringing that story to life. Yeah, you're welcome. And if we find any really exciting new breakthroughs, it'll go on our website. <laughs> We will tell you about it immediately. And they could come from Sounds fantastic. Well, That's true. They, we'd love to hear. They could about come it. from some of the people you see on the screen right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a for sure. Time. For sure. Well, I do have all right. Well, you all take care. And um, we hope to hear more about Fern very soon. Thank, okay. thank you. There's Fern. probably going to be a second book when you find those other paintings. <laughs> oh, no. We'll let you know. We'll keep you informed. <laughs> Thank you. Well, have a great summer. Thanks, you Thank too. You. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Stop. <laughs>